Hi everyone, this is Jeannie Ellis, also known as Scrap Boogie Mama. And today I want to share with you another tutorial with Through the Craft Room Door. Now today's technique that I'm sharing with you will be called Northern Lights. And I'm going to use that technique to make a card with it, and you'll see that at the end of the video. But for this part of the tutorial, I just want to show, share with you how I do Northern Lights. There's different ways of doing it, and everyone has their colors that they choose. But for me, I have chosen, let's see, one, two, three, four specific colors for the Northern Lights part. First of all, I'm using Distress Oxide Inks by Ranger. This one is Fossilized Amber. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and show you what I'm doing with this one. Now, I take my sponges because I like to use the sponges. It gives me more of a grab and a hold. And I like to use my, you know, put my finger inside this, which I'm sure I'm not the only one that does that, but this is the way that I do it. I take my spongy, my dauber, and I ink it up pretty good. Now I'm going to use my left hand because I can do both hands, but my left hand is more comfortable for this. And all you really do is kind of go at an angle. Some go maybe little curves or something but you know you just do it kind of randomly it's not like uh, there's no right or wrong as far as that goes on the colors and how much you do of it or anything but I think the yellow for me is a more prominent color now see I'm just kind of going at an angle I had to turn my paper a little bit and it doesn't look like a whole lot right now but it will get there and the next color that I use is going to be called Lucky Clover also by the Ranger Oxides I'll put my lid on here that doesn't have to be but I want to make sure I put the lid always on my ink pad though because that can dry out so I'm going to get my Lucky Clover sponge I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to kind of go let's see underneath the green uh, the yellow with my green and, you know, it, it looks pretty, but it's not done. This is, you know, just randomly placing it. And I'm not doing it necessarily all the way underneath it. I could. I may still, like, go over here, kind of. I'll make sure my colors are deep enough. And you can use darker colors, probably. But these are the colors that I have on hand. Okay, so it's not looking like a whole lot right now. It just looks like kind of angled stripes. Want to go a little bit darker. For me, anyway. And you can kind of start blending it a little bit. The whole technique involves blending. But I just love how they come out. And you're just, you know, you're getting to play with your colors at this point. So I'm going to set that one aside. The next one that I have on hand is called Broken China. For some reason, I don't have a darker blue. A darker blue might be better. But I did make it with another card, and the colors came out really good. So I'm happy with the Broken China. Now, I see I probably need a new sponge. But we're going to just go ahead and work with what I have here. And you're just kind of starting to fill in the white spaces. Just kind of randomly putting it on. I love the Broken China Blue. It is gorgeous. So starting to really blend in now. I mean, if you look at the Northern Lights, they do have a blending to it. You don't see exact separation of colors. Okay, now I think that's enough of that. I'm going to go ahead and get my next color, which is going to be Seedless Preserves. Beautiful color. I love this purpley color. Now we're going to fill in the rest of the white, white spots. Now, it doesn't really look too much like Northern Lights right now. 
but that's okay because we add one more color to it and I'm squeaking there like I said it's just kind of a random thing now the other card I did was uh, landscape and this one is uh, portrait because I thought that tree that I put on there it needs to be more of a uh, portrait directional see I'm just kind of that purple blending it in with the other colors is just beautiful I don't know if you can tell a whole lot right now because it doesn't really look like a whole mutt bunch now it looks brighter on this end than it does on my camera probably but it really looks pretty on this end and you get all inky and everything but that's okay it's part of crafting don't let it scare you if it bothers you just go ahead and get a pair of disposable gloves okay now this is the part that you have to that's going to probably make you a little nervous. It did me when I first did it. And I probably shouldn't have gone down all the way like I, you know, did. Because I really needed a white space mat down down to the bottom, but I didn't do that. I did it on the other one, too, and I thought, oh, my goodness. I am using Intense Black by Close to My Heart. make sure I get my bright sponge. Yeah, I've not used this, this pad yet. So we'll see how it works. Go ahead and daub it up. This is your black. That's going to be the make or break of your color. And I'm going to kind of go off the edge and start blending in my black. And the black is what's going to give it more of the northern light look to it. I'm not sure if it's not doing real dark because it's a new sponge or what, but it will darken up. So I'm just kind of going in random places, and to me it's already starting to look more like northern lights because it's got that dark color into it. And you don't want to really skimp on that black. Probably don't want to overdo it either. I'm going to kind of go in the corners a little bit on the edges and get that darkness up there at the top. I just love how the blending comes in so effectively and I like to leave some of you know yellows in there I like to make sure that some of my colors are showing and I can decide if I need more or not once I'm done because I can add to it if I want to I don't need to really worry about too much down there but see how you just kind of randomly go in and what's cool is that your colors still really show through. Now see that? It is, I mean, it, to me it's just, I'm loving the way it's coming out. It's coming out really pretty. And I want to make sure that it's dark enough too because it is at night and you see all these colors. Okay, I think that's all I'm going to do with that for now. Put my black back up. That snaps back on. I like that. Now, the next thing that I need to do is I take a piece of paper and I use this to make my little mountain or my hill, whatever you want to call it. My heels. And I am going to, let's see... I'm deciding which way I want it to go. I think I want it to go like this more. And I can make it as small or as big as I want to. And I start out, and this isn't my idea, but I know that, you know, there's a lot of people out there that do it this way. That's where I learned it. 
lots of YouTube channels have these kind of techniques going on. Different ones do it differently, but they all end up basically the same. So I'm going to take my charcoal. That's what I've got there. It's a charcoal uh, close to my heart. I'm going to kind of angle my paper a little bit. And let's see, I may want to go over a little further. Okay. I'm going to take my charcoal and put in the lighter color first. And like I said, I, I didn't mean to go all the way down the colors here. This, I need to ink it up better because it's brand new also. This one may take me a few more swipes than what it normally would. Because I used a different one, a different gray earlier. And I thought, you know, I forgot I had these up here. Better start using them. So anyway, you're going to see that it's just, you know, I'm darkening up the color as much as possible with the gray because that's my background to it. Oh, and see, I moved my mountain. No big deal. I just need to be a little more careful. Hold on to this part. I don't know if you can see it very well that way, but... starting to hide some of the coloring in it now so that's good oops like that whoop <laughs> just keep going with it holding on to as much as possible it takes a little bit sometimes especially if you got a new pad or a new dauber I like to put my daubers into the little containers that's got a storage case to them because it helps keep them separated. I don't get them all confused and I don't lose them. I know exactly where they are. Which I put them into my rolling cart. So now I'm going to get my black, my intense black. Take it, get my dauber out again, didn't necessarily need to put that up, but I did. And I'm going to go to the line first, see how much better that one's inking up now, so that's good. I've already got it inked up, so it's working much better now than it was. Let me see if this is what I want to leave it at. I think I want a little bit more. Use my right hand now. I want to leave a little diversity of color there for the dark, but I really want this to be darker up here. Please bear in mind, these are, this is not something that's new on the internet. You can find a lot of them, so this is where I get my ideas. And hopefully this will help you to inspire you to do the Northern Lights. It's so much easier than what you would think they would be. Okay, let's see what it looks like now. Yes, that's exactly the way I want it to be. Perfect. I don't say that often. <laughs> So, setting that aside, I got my new case all dirty. Oh, my goodness. Setting that aside, and I shouldn't have yet because I, I need it, but um, to get the little stars in there, take a gel pen, get it going. Sometimes it takes a little bit to get them going. And just do some random white dots onto your paper. That's all it is. You got some white dots going on there. Those are your little stars. Not sure why I keep pulling my hand back over there, but I do. 
So you got your stars in the sky. And if it's not enough, you can always add more to it. See if a spot missing. Just dab it in there. You can use other things. You could probably do a paint splatter, but I would do a paint splatter before I put in my mountain. Okay, let's see if that's enough. Now I'm going to take my tree that I want in there. And this is just a, let's see, a stamp, stupendous vintage pine tree. Yes. Oh, no, it's stampabilities. I can't talk. So I'm, again, I'm going to take my ink pad. This is my intense black. And hopefully I'll do better than I did last time. I didn't get it all on there, but I was experimenting. I'm going to stand up. Sometimes I like to stand up just to get make sure I get the intensity of the ink on there that I want. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, I usually like to use acrylic blocks. And one thing that I've always wanted to do was to go ahead and put these onto acrylics. But I have not done that yet. I've been pretty busy lately, so now I'm going to just take this tree. Let's see. And it's going to go down a little bit, so, and I think I got it crooked. And I did. I got it crooked. So, you know what I'm going to do is kind of cover that up. And put another tree over here. There's ways to fix your mistakes. We're just kind of doing random trees all the way around. So now I've got some set of trees in there. And that mistake was fine. I mean, it didn't do any damage to it, so that's good. Now, I do see some ink over here. <laughs> this is another thing. I'm just going to... This is... I did it on purpose. Would you believe that? <laughs> so I'm just going to take my sponge and kind of fix that mistake a little bit there. And then I'm going to take this sponge... And it looks like it's kind of blending in there as far as the, from the trees. So that's good. We all make mistakes and there's usually a way to fix it. Don't throw it out until you know absolutely that you cannot fix it. Okay, so. There we go. So now I have a forest of trees here. I think I'm going to add more, more stars to it, darker stars or something. Some close will be close up. The closer they are, of course. Bigger they look. Okay, now you can see that I have my card front all finished. And if I want, I could make a stamp and put up here Merry Christmas love hope joy to you always in fact I think that's what I'm going to try to do let's see let's see if I can get that on straight and I really like the fact that I got more trees on there than than I intended to do I was going to do just one big tree on there but when you get it not exactly on there right you got to do something right so let's see how straight I can get this I'm going to take my card and I'm going to, actually I'm going to angle it. I'm 
and press it on there really good and lift up. Let's see if you can see that and there you go. Now isn't that a pretty color to the cards? I just love the Northern Lights technique and I just love how it just came together. No rhyme or reason. I didn't have the colors that other people had. But what I had worked just fine. In fact, I really think these colors are perfect for what I was going for. So at the end, I will show you what what card or what my card looks like so stay tuned to the end so you can see the end result of my card thank you for watching it